If you want to learn how to customize your Pelican case foam for the Canon CRN500 and you want to preserve the foam without it falling apart, then watch this video. First, let's get this pesky sticker off the case without leaving residue. I'm going to use a hairdryer for that. Nice. Looks like someone at Pelican was a little sloppy on applying some decals. Hi, Gary Cruz here with amazestudios.com and today I'm going to be coating my pluck foam that's inside this Pelican air case with a Plasti Dip. I bought four based on some other YouTube videos that I've seen. I got this 3M respirator here. I can use a face mask but I was just worried about the organic vapors that are invisible and wanted to protect my lungs. And also to protect this table, I have some leftover plastic from a project earlier and we'll cover this up so that we can spray this without worrying about damaging anything else. All right, let's get started. So let's go ahead and clear off the table. Ideally, you want something that is in the sun because we're gonna need this stuff to dry. Here's the Pelican case. It's a Pelican Air 1637. Inside this, I have two PTZ cameras by Canon. These are the CRN500s. And let's get a closer look at this. So you can see that without any protections, already kind of peeling apart. And that's what we're trying to prevent with the Plasti Dip. Because I spent about two hours putting all this together. And I know it's relatively easy to just buy new foam and put it together, but that's an extra expense and time that I don't want to do. So trying to maximize my investment by protecting this with Plasti Dip. So from what I've seen on YouTube, it looks like it's a pretty good result. And um, we'll go through the process of doing that for these cameras. All right, now that I got all the foam out, not all of it, there was another layer, but I don't think I need to do that. This is the bottom layer. This is the middle layer. And this is the top layer. So you can see, even though I just did this, it's already kind of ripping here. And after a couple uses, I can imagine this is just already falling apart and it'll reduce the amount of protection. So again, hopefully the plastic seal will protect this. This is the middle layer and here's the top layer. And we'll just compare it with the after. Let's start with the top layer because this is one's gonna be on, on the top and it'll be exposed and we'll, we'll compare the texture of what it looks like now and afterwards. Never used one of these respirators before, but I figure it's a good investment to protect our, my lungs. I don't even know how to put this thing together. It looks like it twists on right here. All right, so we want to have some protective gloves here and the instructions say to shake this for one full minute. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna try to put this as evenly as possible. Let it soak in. Looks like it's soaking in pretty good in each layer. Try to get good full coverage. See, you can see it already getting on my finger. So if you don't want plastic dip on your fingers, cover up with gloves. It's already getting over. See? So hopefully I got four cans. Uh, I'll do two cans per layer. So we got three layers. Hopefully it covers it all. Now the instructions say not to do it in direct sunlight. I want to, I want it to dry faster. I'm going to be pretty generous where I can, especially on the delicate areas here. So 
So you can already see the difference here. This is the coated, this is the fresh one that I pulled out. Little pieces kind of hanging off there. I'll just spray that, hopefully it'll, it'll stick. So it's interesting, this, um, this respirator is not that bad. I, I, you can still breathe pretty easily in it, which is a good thing. It's just nice to have a peace of mind that I'm not breathing all this vapor coming in out of this uh, plastic dip. I mean, if you think about it, you're coating this stuff right on the foam. You want this coating your lungs. The uh, respirator was like 35 bucks. I don't know. It's worth it to kind of protect your lungs. Hey, but if you don't want to live on the edge, go for it. Here's what it looks like with a few layers. I'm going to let this dry for about 10 minutes or so, and I'll come back and put another couple of coats. So this is what it looks like close up. Again, if you're going to do this, I would recommend to do it right when you get it. I sat on it for a few days and was using the case coming in and out. And so if you want to preserve the new look, do it while it's new. All right, let this dry and I'll come back and put another few coats and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I took a, uh, a lunch break and this looks like it's pretty safe to touch. I'm gonna put on a, another few coats. All right, this is what two cans look like. Or two coats, or no, not two, <laughs> two cans. So I have two more cans left. I'll do uh, another few coats on the top here. And then when I flip it over, because this is the very top right here, and this is layer two. And down there is layer three. I'll do enough on the bottom one so it bonds the pluck foam. This is what two cans look like. I'm gonna flip it over and then use the remaining one and a half cans. I think that's what I have left. I've got uh, the top layer, the middle layer, and the bottom layer down there. And I'm gonna use the rest for that. So I'm gonna flip this over. And you can see right away the difference here. So here's the difference between the two. And uh, you can see this could still split apart. So we wanna make sure we get the bottom side as well. This doesn't split anymore. I don't wanna pull it too much because it's still curing. I'll do one more coat on this still. All right, that's the first coat. I'm gonna wait about 10 minutes. So remember on the bottom, there's a lot of indents. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, I'm gonna flip that over and have that the new bottom. And then I'll use the, the non-dented side as the fresh bottom with a fresh coat of plastic. So let's just do that. So this rolled into day two and taking a look, it's not as rubberized as I'd like it to be and it's dry. So I went to Lowe's and picked up some Flex Seal. It's about three times as much as Plasti Dip. And I'm gonna put a layer on all three of these foam pieces and see how that looks. And I had to roll into day two because in San Francisco, it's uh, pretty cold and it ran out of sunlight and heat. So we'll see how this goes. All right, I'm gonna start with the second layer. Let's see if I even like how it looks first. I flipped it over, you can see that, you can see less of the, um, the cuts. Oh shoot. This thing is missing a nozzle. I wonder if I can grab one from the Flex Seal can. All right, I found the nozzle, it fell off. I'm gonna start off with the second layer. 
this is the top side of the second layer you can see comparing it to the the bottom side you can still see some of the cuts so i might have to put an extra layer there it doesn't feel rubberized at all but it's not splitting apart So what's interesting, this sprays out not as fine as the Plasti Dip. But it comes out a little bit faster and thicker. This seems to empty faster than the Plasti Dip, since it comes out faster. Here's what it looks like with one coat of Flex seal after 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and put in a second coat. All right, that's the second coat. I'm going to save the rest for the underside. Okay, so here's what two coats of Flex seal looks like. I'm going to flip it over and put one coat of Flex seal on the back. So it seems like the Flex seal is stickier than the plastic dip. That's the two coats on one side. And there's no coats on the back. You can still see some of the indentations of the squares from the cutouts. So far I'm liking the plastic dip better and it's cheaper. Alright, all done. I'm going to have lunch, let that dry for the rest of the day, and then we'll put it back in the case and see how that works out. Hi, Gary Cruz with TheMazeStudios.com here, and today I'm going to cover how I went from storing this PTZ camera or transporting this PTZ camera in a shopping bag to a more secure Pelican case. And it took me a while to find the right dimensions, but make sure you measure and measure twice because uh, you don't want to go wrong with uh, a purchase. You can always return it, but for me, returning is such a hassle. So in this case, I picked a 1637 case because I wanted to securely transport two PTZ cameras. And the other thing that I wanted to do is also secure the foam or treat the foam so that after I take the time to cut it, it's not going to fall apart after a few uses. So I'll go over that as well. So first I'll go over the uh, measurement and cutting out of the foam and then I'll show how I treated the foam with Plasti Dip and also with the last coat with um, Flex Tape. The common mistake that I see with most people is that they'll spend a lot on their gear and chimp out on something else. For example, maybe you'll get an expensive camera but get an expensive tripod. Here I've chosen the Pelican 1637 and I found that this can transport Two cameras. Well, of course, you don't want to put a camera in there loosely. You want to have it with custom foam. So I've got some foam in this example, and then we'll cover how that works. All right, here's the finished foam. I didn't treat this side as much. This was the side I was using previously. You can see some of the indents from before. And then here's the other side that hasn't been used. You can see that as I pull this apart, it takes a little bit more effort to actually peel the foam apart. What If I was to do this again, I'd go with pure Plasti Dip because with the Flex Tape, it was dripping and left, because it comes out a lot thicker than the Plasti Dip, which comes out smoother. But I would probably put at least maybe three more layers of Plasti Dip to ensure that this will continue to cover the perforations. But since this is on the bottom, it really doesn't matter that much as the other two layers. So I'll put this on the bottom layer. This is layer two. Again, with the plastic dip, you can see that there was some drippage. I didn't put as much on the sides because that's not gonna tear apart as easily. This is the bottom side. All right, here's layer two. You can see if I try to pull it apart, it doesn't pull apart as easily as it was before when it, was, when it wasn't treated. I can feel where the Plasti Dip was a little bit thicker. In fact, this is the Flex Tape because the Flex Tape came out thicker than the Plasti Dip. But again, if I was to do this over, I'd do the Plasti Dip because the, pla the Flex Tape was dripping quite a bit. All 
it still fits in there pretty snugly. And here's the top layer. Again, you can see where I was a little heavy handed on the flex tape. When you just use Plasti Dip alone, it's a smoother coating. The flex tape drips, the Plasti Dip did not. And the Plasti Dip comes out way thicker, so it's harder to keep even. So if I was to do this again, I'd stick with Plasti Dip. Here's the real test. Let's put in camera one. I decided to point the, the lens inward because if it was pointing out, there was no lens cap for these cameras. So it reduces the chance of impact. So this fits pretty nicely. And if I take it in and out, oh, that's probably one other thing I would do is glue these pieces together because I don't want to have to keep pushing this down. So that's probably one step I'm gonna do off camera is using some glue, maybe some hot glue to put these two together so it doesn't pull apart as easily. But I can now see that it's no longer trying to tear at the perforations because that's what it's designed to do. So this is a pretty snug fit. I like the fact that it no longer pulls apart because it's now treated. I'm not too concerned about the way it looks. Probably the other thing I'll do is glue the first layer to the second layer or at least glue all the layers together. But now I don't have to worry about the foam disintegrating over time because replacing this every once in a while can get pretty expensive versus spending about $50 in Plasti, in Plasti Dip to coat this multiple times and having this last way longer and give it a more professional look. Not that the look matters, it's just the time it takes to actually go through and cut this was time consuming and I'd rather spend more time being creative. Thanks for sticking with me throughout this video. If you like this content, please consider subscribing and turning notifications on because I like to make videos to help answer questions that I have related to products that I'm considering buying related to live streaming and camera gear in general. Thanks for watching.